I'm sorry, <laughs> Ryan. For... <laughs> I guess I, I I missed the memo. It's all good. I had mm-hmm. it, I had it covered last week. We're, we're all you, good. You had the pre-show covered. I had the pre-show covered. Okay, this mm-hmm. is the pre-show. You had it covered. I must have missed it. It's all good. Okay. But I figured since I did a lot of work <laughs> last week, yes, we're gonna put put you to the test today, and like we're actually putting you to to a test. Okay. So I figured. So I'm I'm new here. I just I started within the past like year. You're like the the most newest person. Yeah. And okay. therefore, since I don't know everything, and yeah. you've been here longer, you obviously know everything about every member of the staff. So I have put together a game show I like to call the Cowork Quiz. Okay. I thought, I thought it was a pretty good name. I'm proud of it. I made professional little looking cards and everything. Hey mom, I'm on a game show. Woo! <laughs> so you guys play along with us. I have uh, four okay. questions here about the staff at SHPC to see how much you know. Are you ready? Okay. Lay it on. Question one. Okay. How long has Pastor Bonnie worked at SHPC? Ooh. 15 years. 18 years. <gasps> oh! Question two. Okay, all right. Where was Kim originally from? And I'm uh, looking for the specific like town, not just like broad province. Saint Albert, Saskatchewan. Raymore, Saskatchewan. Ah, oh, come oh. on! I only oh. know like. I thought you knew these. Like you, you've been here. You've been I know. Here longer. I know like four cities, towns, towns. I don't, I don't know. Hamlets. In Saskatchewan? I don't know how big Raymond okay. is. I'm from Ball, but that's, that's a different yeah. story. Question three. Okay. Uh, what am I? Well, Kaden, what's my score first? You, let me, you, uh, I have to, tell me what my score is, though. So right, I know. You, you have zero points out of two. So there's two more questions. You can get like a 50-50 here. Okay. Room for improvement. Room for improvement. All right. How many siblings does Jen have? Uh, I think I've... I think I've seen like pictures on Facebook. Okay. Okay. I am gonna go with two. Is that your final answer? Well, yeah, because it's right. She has four. She has one sister oh. and three brothers. Man. And the fourth question, you ready for okay. this? All right. You have to at least get one of these right. Come on. Okay. So if you know Antoinette, she loves her Starbucks. Yes. Do you know what Antoinette's go-to Starbucks order is? Uh, she is. A two uh, percent half whip double pump caramel macchiato. What size? Oh, grande. Well, you got a little bit there. She's okay. a venti caramel macchiato with an extra shot of espresso. Espresso. Sorry. So I'll give you like a quarter of a can point. I, can I have a quarter of a? I'll point? give you a quarter of a point. Woo! So let us know how you guys did, did that at home. Hopefully mm-hmm. you did better than, uh, than Ben on that. Yeah. But that's my game for you. Okay. Well, uh, that's your game, and this is our service. Mm-hmm. Uh, this morning, we have Gord is going to be leading us in worship, so looking forward to him and his team. Mm-hmm. And we have Harrison that's going to be bringing us the word today. You know what? Harrison brings some great words. Some he always has words. some funny anecdotes and stuff like that. Always some good stories behind always it. Always some yeah. great stories. So look forward to some some Harrison preaching. Yeah. I am. Oh, I'm, so. I'm pumped for it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so as always, prepare your hearts, grab your family, and uh, I'm excited to see what you have uh, that God has in store for you today. Mm-hmm. We're confident that God uh, is going to meet you where you guys are at in your home. So mm-hmm. enjoy today's service. This is the day the Lord has made. Welcome to Steel Heights Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Bonnie, and we're so excited that you can be with us today. I have a very important announcement to make after the service. So you'll have to sit tight and enjoy the service. Let's begin with a reading from Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can be in your presence all the time, Lord. Thank you that you made this day and that you love us and we desire to serve you and to worship you today. May our praise be glorifying to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Good morning, Steel Heights. We're excited to bring the music portion of the worship as we celebrate God's love for us and to us and among us. And so the words will be appearing on the screen, as you know, in front of you. We hope that you worship and sing along with us. Morning, I see you in the sunrise every morning. It's like a picture that you've painted for me. A love letter in the sky. So could have had a really different story, but you came down from heaven to restore me, forever save my life. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. You're breaking down the weight of all my mountains Even when it feels like I'm surrounded You never leave my side whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody loves me like you love me I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. song to sing Oh what a song to sing Oh what a song to sing Oh what a song my heart keeps singing Oh what a song to sing me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, I will worship you, forever worship you. Nobody loves me like you love me. I stand in awe of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you.
There's a passage in the book of Psalms where King David acknowledges his broken and sinful nature and expresses in a heartfelt plea to the Lord to lift him up, cleanse his heart, and sustain him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Singing songs that contain direct passages from God's word have always been an especially, especially meaningful way to worship. Join us in singing these verses from Psalm 51. Steel Heights, it's a privilege to go to God in prayer, and we can pray at any time, anywhere, and under any circumstances. The Father's heart and the throne is open, and what a privilege for us to share our love and our concerns with him, shall we pray. Gracious God, the God who is all present, the God who is everywhere, the God who is with us, Emmanuel. Our Father, we who are dispersed and scattered throughout our community, we who are separated and isolated, we come to you collectively and with one voice as the body of, Steel, the body of Christ here at Steel Heights Church. Father, we come to worship you and to seek your face to seek your presence, to seek your will and your direction for our lives. Oh, Father, receive our worship. Change us from the inside out. Fashion us back into the image of Christ. Mold us into instruments of peace. 
Father, this morning we pray for victory. We pray for victory over fear. There's a lot of fear within the world today. And some handle it well, others not so much. But fear has demoralized and crippled all of us at one time or another. Fear of death. Fear of disease. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection or someone loving us no more. Fear of financial ruin. Lord Jesus, you have said that the kingdom of God dwells in us. That your kingdom dwells in your people. Therefore, the power that raised our Savior from the dead dwells in us and causes us to face life with hope and divine energy and power for living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Praise you, O God, for your light. Praise you for your light dispels darkness. Your light illuminates our path and shows us the way. Your light brings warmth and fills us with peace. Your light brings life, everlasting life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Therefore, we can say without a doubt or fear that you, O oh God, are our helper. And we don't have to be afraid of anything. What can mere man do to us? Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. If God is for us, who can be against us? Father, you have not given us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or cringing or fear, but you have given us the spirit of power and love and calmness and a balanced mind. Therefore, we can say with the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Thank you, O God. Thank you for giving us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, Father, humbly we commit to you the offerings, the gifts this morning, that you would bless each gift and each giver, that your kingdom may come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
known you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in the coming and the going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 Church, um, it is a privilege for me to share God's word this morning with you. Before you express any reaction to my new look, let me tell you something. Uh, letting my beard uh, grow, it wasn't my idea. It was Roxy's idea. So she says that uh, it suits me. So I have to to believe that I. I don't have choice. Um, as you all know, women uh, are always right. And men are never wrong. That's, uh, that's called damage control. Speaking about uh, who is right, uh, I, I came across uh, this quote uh, a while ago. Uh, it says, uh, if a man says something in the woods, and there is not a woman to hear it, is he still wrong? I don't know, but I have the feeling that uh, I'm already disturbing the peace of your homes, uh, so I think it's, it's better if we pray together, and I, I will ask you to calm down. Uh, there is no reason to uh, dispute who is right and who is not. And so let's, let's pray together uh, and ask the Lord to bless this time. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your grace, your love, and your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity that we have of sharing your uh, word. We, we pray that your Holy Spirit will uh, guide us uh, during this time and that we will learn uh, something that we can um, bring to our lives and bless those who uh, 
we love and bless those in our community. Father, we pray for your direction during this, this time. Amen. Uh, the title of my message uh, is uh, Living Out Our Hope in a World That Reje Rejects Us. And let me start by asking, by asking you, are you afraid of rejection? I believe we're all afraid of rejection. Uh, we want to be likable. We want to adapt and feel that we belong to those groups uh, to whom we interact with. Uh, rejection has the potential to damage our lives. Re rejection can lead us to question our self-esteem, lead us to depression, anxiety. We will, we will give up on things. Giving up can become our commonplace. Even though rejection Rejection doesn't always lead, a, lead to violence, it is painful. The simple act of being ignored can make us suffer. We struggle with frustration, anger, and uncertainty. But how do we react when, our, when we are facing reaction will determine the outcome. If we learn how to deal with react, rejection, it will, become, it will become a positive experience that will end helping us to accomplish our purpose in life. Today, I will talk about three biblical principles that will make us to push through the difficult times of rejection and bring glory to God. Our text for today is found in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 19. And I will start by reading verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 19. And we will start reading in verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. I will read it again. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. So the first principle that we can see here, it is don't be surprised. We need to be aware. Why will you be rejected, rejected for being a Christian? It's a question that we need to answer to understand this principle. And let me start with an analogy that may help us to answer this question. When my family and I, when we immigrated to, to Canada almost 16 years ago, I thought that uh, the only different differences we will encounter between us and Canadian people will be the language and the physical characteristics that we, we have. We all share the same needs, uh, eating, drinking, shelter, uh, showing affection, procreation, but I was far away from the truth because even though we share the same needs, we use different ways to meet those needs. The way that we approach those needs is different. The way that we behave around those needs is not the same. If I am not able to read those differences, then I my process of adaptation to this uh, culture will delay. I will feel rejected. I will suffer thinking that I don't belong to this land. Canadians may consider that I behave 
that the way that I behave is wrong. Because something that is normal in Costa Rica may be considered bizarre or even immoral in this culture. And I will give you a couple of examples that it will help me to explain what I'm trying to say. In Costa Rica, if uh, someone invited me to a party and it happened that I, the only person that I know is the person who is hosting. And, you know, I come and I start, you know, meeting people. I introduce myself and have, you know, nice conversations. And when the time to leave come, I start, I decide to kiss every single woman that was there just to say goodbye. People in, in, in Costa Rica will take that as a, you know, normal. It's not that everybody will do something like that, but it won't take people by surprise. People will understand that I, you know, people in Costa Rica used to say goodbye, even though if you don't know the people very well, by kissing uh, in the cheek. If I do something like that here in Canada, can you imagine what the reaction will be? At first, people may think, you know, this is something different. And then they will move and say, I think it's weird. And then we end saying, you know, this is not weird. This is not different. This is wrong. Because that's the way it is in Costa Rica, but that's not the way that it is here. And people may not know that. Second example that I want to share with you. In Costa Rica, when I use the public uh, transit uh, service, if, I'm, if a, a, woman, a woman get into the bus, I will stand up and give my seat to her. No matter her age, uh, if he looks healthy or not, I will do that. And that's very common there. But I learned that in Canada, that can be taken in a different way. Women can take that as I am saying, you know, you're weak, I'm strong, and at least that's what I learned when I came. You may have a different opinion on that, but that's what I learned when I came here. So I learned that I shouldn't do that because I can be in troubles if I try to be, um, you know, gentle or show some courtesy to, to women in that way. Sometimes when you go to a supermarket, you will see some immigrants having phone conversations with a very loud uh, voice. And that's not very common here. You know, people in Canada can, you know, take that as a, you are being rude because, you know, they are shopping in the supermarket and they, they want a, a quiet environment. But in your culture, that's not seeing like you being rude. It's just you're having you know, a conversation and then you're being loud and nobody cares about it. So as you can see, uh, there are a lot of differences between cultures. And if you don't know about them, then you will suffer rejection. You will feel that you don't belong to that place. As Christians, Regardless of our origin, we face the same challenge because we all are foreigners in this world. Philippians 3.20 says that our citizenship is in heaven. So as an immigrant here in Canada, I was, oh, I'm still learning how to make changes to the way that I do things in order to fit here. But the question would be, can I do the same things that I do in terms of culture? Could I do the same things for the, in, the, in, 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 in the things that belong to the spirit to avoid re rejection? Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It seems that I cannot do that. Because the things of the spirit and the things of the world are not just different. They are in conflict with each other. 
truth is not considering absolute in this world. Truth can change depending on time, place, and circumstances. For us, there is only one truth, and it doesn't change. The world believes in different theories about the origins of life. We believe in divine creation. The world believes everything we have is the result of luck or our own efforts. We believe everything we have comes from God. The world manages their sexuality based on feelings. We follow God's design. The concept of love, mercy, obedience, fidelity, commitment are totally different. We walk towards living a righteous life. The world towards pleasure. As you see, there is a conflict between the spirit and the world. So in, there is no way that I can say I will basically change things in my life to avoid re rejection because I don't want to be seen as weird or different or the things that I'm doing are wrong, the things that belong to the spirit. So don't be surprised that people will think we are different, that we are weird or even wrong, and that we will suffer rejection. We need to be aware about that. The second principle, uh, it is found uh, in verse 13 to 18 of our passage of this morning. And I will start by reading from 13 to 19, 18, sorry. But rejoice that participate in the suffering of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you hear that name, for it is time for judgment, judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will, what will the, the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Um, if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? If, as a Christian, you think you are not experiencing rejection, there is a possibility that your fear is making you to run away from those situations where your Christian values will be exposed to others. In other words, the only person who knows that you are Christian is you. So the second principle is that we don't run away from rejection. We need to face rejection. We need to understand rejection. When I asked uh, Roxy to go out with me the first time, I remember that uh, I felt that rejection was in the air. So I, what I did is I asked her in a way that she doesn't have, you know, the opportunity to reject me. So what I asked was, what would you say if I ask you to go out with me? So trying to keep it safe. And she gave me this response. I don't know. You are not asking. Boom. A life lesson for me. How can I know? How can I accomplish something in life if the fear of being rejected makes me step back? 
The fear of re rejection will keep you away from the opportunities of sharing Christ's love, even when rejection is not there. We will find the perfect excuse. We will build in our minds the outcome, and we will run away from this situation with an empty hands. Sometimes re rejection is not there, but our fear will push us to run away. I remember this young man that was in uh, Costa Rica in this arena where they, um, I don't know exactly how do you call that in English. I, you don't have that here, but they have them in Spain, but it's, it's a little bit different. What happened is uh, by you know, part of the celebration of the end of the year, in, in San Jose, they have this arena with the stands, and then they will let a bull to come into the arena, and many young men will be there running from the bull. They won't harm the bull, but they basically the bull will harm them, uh, but they will run away from the, the bull. The bull will be there, and people are just, you know, trying to make the bull, uh, to take, um, to cut the bull attention so that they, they will, the bull will follow them, and so that's fun for them. I, I, I don't see any fun on that, but that's fun for them. And th this young man was uh, in the arena, and he was in the totally opposite way where the bull was. So if you are in the arena, you don't have a good um, uh, perspective of where the bull is because you, the only thing that you see is people there. So when the people move, you may think, okay, the bull may be coming. So this guy was in the other side, very far away from the bull. Every time that the people move, this guy run to the fence and jump, just looking for protection. But the reality was that the bull wasn't coming. And so he was doing that for a while. And in one of the times that he did that, the people moved. And he thought that the bull was coming after him. He just ran. He jumped. And he ended with about three or four, um, how do you call it, risk? Broken? Is risk? Rips. Sorry. <laughs> Rips broken. Thank you, Pastor Bonnie. <laughs> You see, that happens in life sometimes. You know, we are afraid about rejection, that there, there's times that re rejection is not even there, and we just run away. Running away from re rejection will take you away from your purpose, from the things God prepares for you. You will miss the opportunity to make a difference in this world. We deny Christ when we hide who we are. Remember Peter, when people were telling him that he was with Jesus? He denied that he was with Jesus. And that happens sometimes with us. You know, when you are trying to hide that you are a Christian, when someone makes a comment and you know the truth, and you don't say anything because you don't want to be rejected, even though the, the Holy Spirit is pushing you to say something or prompting you to say something, and you don't say anything. In, in a certain way, you're basically denying Jesus. You are hiding. If I am talking with someone about things I have accomplished in life, I don't, and I don't mention him as the one who made all things possible in my life, it's because I fear rejection. And there is a contradiction between what I believe and what I do. Hiding from rejection will keep you with a bunch of no, no in your pocket. You will never go for the yes. You will keep the no's in your pockets. You may initiate a lot of projects, but never take them to the end. Because when you spot 
rejection from a distance, you will give up your efforts. God will use those trials to bring understanding, to build our character. I was having supper with my family last weekend, and then someone knocked at our door. So I basically changed my uh, mood uh, or my, so we were having a good time, and then I just, you know, have the Canadian reaction. Because in Costa Rica, everybody knocks at your door, and you are not surprised. But in here, you know, oh, someone is knocking. Well, now with Amazon, you would say it's probably Amazon. But we're still, you know, surprised that someone comes to our door. And I opened the door, and, this, and, and there was this uh, man, very polite, very kind in the way that he talks. And he introduced uh, himself to me. And what he says is, you know, that he was concerned about this COVID-19, that he lives very close to our uh, home, and he was just checking on, on, on people and see if everything is okay, how are, are we doing. And uh, he happened to attend a Pentecostal church, and he gave me, uh, you know, some brochures. And, and you know, when uh, I was, I have to be honest with you, before I opened the door, I just, you know, took my rejection uh, mask. You know, uh, because I thought it's probably someone selling something. And sometimes, you know, um, I, I, I don't have to put any excuse. I, I don't have to do that. But I opened the door just trying to let the, the person know, you know, we're having supper. And, but this man, he knows that rejection is there. That every time that he knocks at, at, at any door, rejection is waiting for him. But that's not something that it, it will make him run away. He will face it because he understands, because he's facing rejection. So every time that rejection comes, he learns something. He's becoming stronger and stronger because the Holy Spirit is helping him to understand that re rejection doesn't mean that your purpose is done. It's the, it's the opposite. Your purpose in life is being built. You are walking towards your purpose because you are facing rejection. You don't need to feel ashamed. You are not stealing or causing harm to anyone. There is nothing to be ashamed of it. The things you should be ashamed we're already throwing away in the Calvary when Christ died for our sins. The third uh, principle that I want to share with you, I believe is found in the last verse of our passage for this morning. It's verse 19 and says, So then... Those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. You may say, you know, Harrison, it is easy to be aware of rejection and don't run away. It is easy to say that. But it's a different story when you are there facing that. I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but uh, there is a phrase that it, it is used in Costa Rica that says, uh, it is not the same to look her come than dance with her or talk with her. So that means that you, you are a young man and you are interested in a, a, a woman, uh, so it's not the same thing to see her coming than actually take the step and talk to her. And you may think that this is a case like that. You know, it is not easy to, you know, run away when rejection is in front of us because it is painful. 
But then is when the, the last principle take over here, and that is faith. The Bible says, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So the world is not bigger than God. And he is with you. A beautiful example of this is the story of Moses. The Bible says that by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. That will be the easy way for him. Privilege, pleasure everywhere. No need to, you know, trying to uh, adapt to the group, you're already there. But decide to go with his people and be in his street is different. He decided to go by faith and make that step. He knew that he would be rejected. But he took that decision. Faith will make you see things that otherwise you won't. You will feel the presence of, of the Lord with you. I want to end by saying that uh, in this verse 19, there is, there is a plus here at the end that says continue to do good. Even though we are in the world that is in conflict to our values as Christians, to our beliefs, we are not being called to build walls between us and the world. We have been called to build bridges. We have been called to do good because when you are facing rejection, if you are not clear about what rejection is, if you are not clear that as a Christian you will be rejected, if you are not clear that you need to face rejection and it will be an opportunity for you to grow during those times, if you don't have that faith to uh, make that step forward, it is very easy to react in a different way, in a wrong way. Anger, frustration. But God is telling us that we need to continue doing good, even when we are being rejected. I remember two men in my life when I was away from God, that they were Christians. They professed to be Christian. One was a young man. And I remember that I had an interaction with him. I was invited to play soccer in, with, this, with the people of this church. And in Costa Rica, there is a, um, a Costa Rican way to refer to someone. We will use the word my. And that's a very popular way. It, it, it comes from the word maje, that means uh, dumb, uh, do, but it's more dumb than anything else. So we in Costa Rica make it short, and we say my. So it's not an insult, but it's very common that people will use it. And some Christians, they basically think that it's not good to call each other my. And I'm okay with that. But um, I remember at that time that I was invited to this church to play soccer, and I was playing... And I called one of the members of the church, my, and he was very upset. He turns to me and he said, don't call me my. That was one experience that I had. There was a wall right there. I remember this other gentleman. 
that he used to work in Central Bank, and he, he knew Christ during his time working in the bank, in Central Bank. So people knew him before Christ and after Christ. So, and I remember that we used to tease him, uh, making jokes about the phrases that he said before he was a Christian, just to bring those things that he used to say and do. And I don't remember seeing this guy upset about it. He always had an answer to us, and he was very gentle with a smile, and there you have two different reactions. One trying to build bridges and one putting walls because we are in conflict with the world. So remember that. We need to acknowledge that rejection will be there. We need to know that we don't have to run away from rejection. We need to know that faith is important. Faith will give us uh, the this, this strength, the confidence to keep walking and not run away from those situations. And we also know that we need to keep doing good. To conclude, I just want to uh, invite you to think about our Lord Jesus Christ. He, make a dif- he makes a difference in this world because suffering never took him by surprise. He never ran away from, from rejection. And he put his, his trust in the Father and always did good to all, including those who rejected him. If our Lord Jesus Christ were happened to decide to run away from rejection, there were no such a thing of salvation, no such a thing of eternal life. You and me will be saying, let's eat and drink because tomorrow we will die. Be like him. Don't let fear of re- the fear of rejection to keep you away from fulfilling God's purpose. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Harrison, for that word uh, from Scripture, from God, and thank you also for choosing uh, this last song, Whom Shall I Fear? The God of Angel Armies. You hear me when I call You are my morning song Though darkness fills the night It cannot hide the light Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy Underneath my feet You are my sword and shield Though troubles linger still, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. Behind the God of angel armies 
is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. is always by my side. Thank you, worship team. <laughs> that was wonderful. Well, we've been waiting a long time for this exciting announcement, and it really is an exciting announcement. Thank you for waiting till the end of the service. Any guesses as to what that announcement might be? <laughs> <laughs> get to fly to the Maritimes? No. no. <laughs> anyway, our announcement is we are relaunching our in-person worship service on Sunday, July 5th. Very exciting time to get back together as a church family. We're going to be taking a couple weeks just to get things ready for you uh, to follow the AHS guidelines. And we will also be having two services, one at 9 and one at 11 a.m. So you get a choice of which service you would like to attend. Let's close now with a benediction. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. <laughs>